Welcome to Smart Brown Voices, your weekly podcast featuring diverse voices from around the world, giving you insights on how others made it big in their respective fields. Now sit back, grab a notebook, and get ready to be inspired. And don't forget to use hashtag Smart Brown Voices to share insights, moments of wisdom, and things from the show that inspire you. And now, here's your host, social media nerd and technology activist, Mr. Mike Street. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mr. Mike Street, and we're back with another edition of Smart Brown Voices. We have done over 70 episodes of the show, so I want to thank everybody so much for uh, all of your continued support. We've had over 20,000 downloads of the show, so it's really great that you guys are really getting into all of our content. Also, just wanted to send another special shout out to everybody who came out to see us live at Propeller Fest in Hoboken. Uh, It was great just to meet some of the fans of the show, get your feedback from the episode you guys have been hearing. So for all of these guys who came up to me and said, hey, after um, the panel, thank you so much for your support. And, you know, we got more in store for you. So today... We are going to be talking about work, startups, and, you know, pretty much kind of like finding your purpose. And so today's guest is Thomas Calhoun Jr., who I met at Wecom Startup School. So if you listen to episode one of Smart Brown Voices, uh, you know that we did our first interview ever with uh, Paul C. Brunson. And so this brother was there in the audience, and a lot of people loved what he was talking about. So, Thomas, welcome to Smart Brown Voices. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Thomas, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? So, I've been an entrepreneur for um, about eight and a half years, full time. Um, I started out doing a lot of government contracting and consulting. Uh, for big defense contractors and some consulting firms. And then I started my own consulting firm and uh, started out in entrepreneurship in that way. And then uh, back in 2014, I decided to take a break from that uh, business and focus more so on um, more scalable ventures, tech startups, and writing my book. So, t- so you just, you're about to release your book this summer. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what's going to be in the book and what was the process like for you? Like, you know, what are you really trying to get across with us now? So ultimately, I wrote about how to identify what you might want to call um, a purpose driven startup, you know, figuring out who you are and um, what you want to do in life and creating a business around that. Um, and I identify steps and give um, the readers an opportunity to journal about where they are in that process. And the book is called uh, Something's Missing, Something's Identifying missing. the yeah. Startup Within. So, you know, yeah. so what, what is that message trying to get across to everybody? So I think, the, I think uh, a lot has been made of startups, you know, of late, particularly because of you know, uh, Facebook and the movie and also Shark Tank and things of that nature. So I think a lot of people are getting engaged in the, or at least hearing a lot about the startup community. Yeah. However, a lot of it's focused on, you know, valuations like Uber and, and some of these other tech startups out in the Valley. And I think a lot has been made of that, even with the new uh, sitcom on, um, HBO Silicon Valley. I think a lot has been made of valuations and um, and all of that, and and not so much about the actual um, problem that people are start, um, solving and what people the founders are getting out of it beyond the, the money, right? Yeah. Um, so you think it's think, kind of like a, a romanticizing startups a bit too exactly. much? Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of like you know romantic comedies, you know, for entrepreneurs you know what i mean it's just very like uh romanticized and very like um i don't want to say unrealistic because it's happening obviously but um the probability in which you would get those kind of valuations are low and it doesn't mean that if you don't have an idea that could potentially get 
to that kind of valuation that it's not worth you going out on your own. Yeah. Right. Or at least trying to do something. So I just wanted to bring us, give, make it accessible for people who not, who may not see themselves in that way um, today. Yeah. And I, th- I think you bring up a good point because, you know, it is a hard road, you know, like I, I listen to startup podcasts, which is uh, one of my favorite podcasts and it chronicles, uh, you know, just the adventures or misadventures that many of these startups are going through in Silicon right. Valley, outside of Silicon Valley. And, you know, like and a lot of people, you know, they don't have salaries for years. You know, they live yep. on, on uh, you know, what they can to get by because they have to use all the money that they have to, you know, to float the business and to make sure that things, you know, that people's salaries get paid and that they have equipment and, I do feel like now it's like, you know, because of the social network and because everybody wants to be the next Mark Zuckerberg, you know, I feel like there is a lot of too much romanticism going on. Like, you know, so how how are you keeping it real with, with this book? So I, the way I did it was obviously at this point, I'm not Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. And so many of people may or may most likely have not even heard of me. Um, and that's the point. It's like there are a lot of entrepreneurs out here who you've never heard of that are doing very well for themselves and and creating either lifestyle businesses or, you know, uh, buying franchises. There are a lot of people you've never heard of on TV that either are doing, you know, are doing well for themselves or very wealthy and, and not, and you never heard of them. They're not on TV. And so I think it just becomes another, a, another way, particularly, um, a lot of people feel feel get impacted by this, but particularly black people can get really caught up in the hype. So it becomes another thing that we're following and consuming, but not really um, owning. And so we can be fans uh, and fanatics of Mark Zuckerberg, or we can be fans and fanatics of Jay-Z. I'm a huge Jay-Z fan, but I try to take what I hear and, and or and see him do and try to do it myself and not just be a fan but be more of a of a follower and more of a um an owner in my own space how do i make those things happen in my life and what does that mean what does it look like so the the way i kept it real was just to talk about my own journey and my own story so that they could see and identify with someone who may be going through something just like them and decided to to take take matters into his own hands so tell me, what, what was one of the biggest lessons you learned as a, you know, as an entrepreneur about, you know, starting up a company and business that, you know, that our listeners can, can use in, uh, you know, in their lives? Great question. So um, there are so many. <laughs> the, the thing is, I, I don't know if you were there for my talk at We Can Start a School, but like, you know, another thing that I'm kind of tiring of is the blogs that say, you know, in ways to do X is blah, 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 right? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I can give you, there are probably 3,893 lessons that you need to learn, and I might can give you two or three of them or five. But, you know, there's a lot, and everybody learns different lessons. The main things that that I need to learn, I need, I had to learn um, was that sometimes it's not about me. Um, that's one of them. So I got in a situation where, there was um it was actually with a very popular um gym franchise I won't say the name but so the owners of this franchise were basically losing money and the fr- and so <clears throat> they couldn't figure out why they were losing money so I one of the, my entree into the situation was a um a gentleman that was there that was he was a consultant to the franchise in terms and as a trainer. And so he brought me in as a consultant to try to help them figure out why they were losing money on a, on a gym that was widely, you know, known and a lot of people were using it. And so I went in, I did my pitch, did several pitches, and and finally I was like, look, more than anything, I just need the, your logo on my website. So I'll, I'll be willing to do this gig for free if you, you know, give me a reference and let me use your logo more website and he thought about it and then he was like "Mm, no thanks (laughs) and so that was i was super super dejected right i was like wow i I literally can't even give my services away 
right? So I went, I spent some time really being frustrated about that. But a few months later, uh, my, my friend called me and said, um, told me exactly what happened. As it turns out, this particular owner that I was meeting with, they were actually stealing the money. And that's why, <laughs> that's why they didn't want me to be a part of it because it was, I assumed that it was because I didn't, they didn't believe that I could solve the problem, but perhaps it was because they believed I could solve the problem and they didn't want me to solve it. So that's one thing. Just kind of understand that just because you hear no, it doesn't mean that you're not qualified or you haven't um, checked all the boxes. Sometimes it's just where they are in the buying cycle or maybe some other things going on. Another thing is you have to, you have to get your money right. And that may be number one. I spent like oh, 30 months, my first 30 months trying to get, let's say from January 2008 to June of 2010, that's about 30 months. I spent 23 of those months not making any money. So you need to have your money <laughs> right when you're trying to get into business because you you have to be your first investor. Um, that's another thing I told the Weekend Startup School participants. Um, Not everybody. That's a really big part of it. Yes, and, and everyone loved money. <laughs> but uh, so, what, what were some of the things that you? So you had. So you spent twenty two months not making any money. So what? What? What was the turning point for you? Like, what was? What was the thing that kind of clicked for you and you figured it out? Which we were you able to start to see? You know, some revenue coming back in. So what happens? It, it broke. Up. It wasn't consecutive. It was like seven. Con- Consecutive months when I first got started, and I got my first pretty decent sized contract. It was like six months, and so that that helped me to go the next sixteen months in a row. Um, but the thing that got um, me through it was again having my money right in the first for the first seven months. But then every time you get on a gig, I knew once I got my first gig, that would lead to my second gig, and so. I got that gig, and the per- guy that I met on the first gig, eventually, 16 months later, came through, and together we got another gig, and that lasted for like four years. So, um, and then I got some other gigs subsequently while I was on that. So a lot of it is just networking, like knowing, um, knowing, using your network and finding the right people that can actually help you, and because you don't know when, who those people are, a lot of times you can get your greatest value from people you don't really know well. So, like you have to, you have to have enough money and enough runway to get to know a person, build a relationship, and then actually find an opportunity together. And that could take a long, that could take a while. Um, so that was a big lesson, and that's why we we're building. Uh, a new platform, Nifasi, uh, which is actually Swahili for opportunity, because it is so difficult, particularly for uh, blacks and Hispanics and women of all races, ethnicity, ethnicities, to identify capital, identify partners, identify mentorship, and, and build those relationships. So we're building a platform particularly to focus on helping those that segment of our population do that more efficiently. Awesome. So, so, so tell us a little bit more about the book. What can everyone expect inside, and when when is it? When is the release date? So, I'm working with the publisher, um, and uh, hopefully, the book will be out on Independence Day. I, w- I really want that to be the day it comes out because, uh, for obvious reasons, right? Um, in terms of freedom and independence, and and what that entrepreneurship can bring for individuals. That's that's kind of the date I was targeting. Inside the book, we're really talking again about um, helping people identify their purpose and identify how they can uh, make money um, off of their passion, right? The big um, sort of uh, approach these days to try to profit off of your passion. And so helping people figure that out is, it's a challenge because a lot of people have ideas. A lot more people have ideas than actually capitalize on them. And so the book, the goal of the book is to share my story and, and give other people an opportunity to write their own story and identify those things um, in them already that could be used to take to the marketplace and generate revenue so that they don't have to put up with some of the things that, um, 
that we that they uh, that are causing them stress at work. Uh, I don't know if you realize it or your audience realizes it, but about Gallup did a recent study, and like 70% of American workers are un- unhappy at work, right, and disengaged at work. And so, seven out of ten employees, that says that there's some drastic issues going on in the workplace. But I think a lot of it has to do with people taking jobs, particularly just for money, but not what they really want to do in life. And that's because they don't know how to do what they really want to do in life. So the book, the goal of the book is to help them and the software is to help them figure out what it is they want to do and then connect with the people they need to do that. Awesome. Well, we can't wait for the book to uh, come out and read it. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, make sure you send us links to uh, the book and we'll share it out with the Smart Brown Voices community. So now it's time for a a new segment that we've been doing in our show. It's called The Smart Six. So I'm going to ask you six fun questions and you're going to tell us what comes to the top of your head. (laughs) Oh, all right. All right. Number one, what book changed your life? Ooh. One, I can only choose one. Yes. Um, Autobiography of Malcolm X. That was the first one. Nice. I love that book too. All right, number two. What's your favorite song that you're jamming to right now? Wow. So I just got finished telling someone that uh, um, I've listened to whole damn year uh, by Mary J. Like. 12 times just in the last 30 minutes. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm rocking right now. Nice. All right, so number three, what's the one thing that you do to relax? Um, probably listen to music. Listen to music is probably my favorite thing. Awesome. Number four, what's one movie that you've seen over and over again? Like I always tell love people, Jones. I've seen <laughs> Purple Rain 100 times. <laughs> so Love Jones. I've seen like a thousand episodes of Love Jones. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. All right. Number five, who is, one, who is another smart brown voice that you look up to and respect? Uh, good question. Um, I, I'd have to say Paul Brunson. I think I respect what he's done and how he's basically taken his gifts, natural and um, and nurtured and and uh, to the marketplace in a big way. Awesome, man. And uh, remember, guys, you can listen to episode number one, which was featured Paul Brunson. Uh, so just search for it. It's uh, what you can learn from two billionaires. And our final question, what can our listeners do to help support your career? Oh, definitely. They can follow me on Twitter, at Calhoun Speaks um, or at Nafasi App. Um, they can definitely buy the book and join our platform. And we and didn't even we talk about your Nafasi platform. Say it again? So t- wait, so tell everyone about the platform that you built. Oh, so the platform, again, is just connecting. Um, it's like LinkedIn for startups. So it's called Nafasi, N-A-F-A-S-I. Um, and the website is www.nafasi.co. So the goal is to be a virtual innovation ecosystem. So like um, the virtual intersection of like Black Wall Street and Silicon Valley, right? So connecting like mentors, investors, founders, and practitioners all in one place <clears throat> on the basis of ideas. So I recently, we recently just partnered with Thurgood Marshall College Fund. And uh, we did an event down in Atlanta and with all HBCU students that went really well. And um, they ended up, it was some really great projects that came out of that. So we're looking forward to continuing to work with those students and develop some of them into the real companies. <clears throat> That's, that sounds amazing. Uh, we'll definitely make sure to link to, uh, you know, to all those websites and all of your Facebook and Twitter and other outlets so that our listeners can uh, support you. And, and buy your book as well once it's released. So, Thomas, thank you so much for coming on Smart Brown Voices today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. Just a, another exciting Smart Brown Voice out there in the world doing great things. Please, 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 you know, support this brother and everything that he's doing. Um, 
And also support us. Remember, we have a book out now in Amazon. It's called John's Fabulous Fashion Day. Uh, it's our first children's book of many, which is coming. Uh, our second book is going to be released in September, so please look out for that. And we also have a coloring book coming as well. And, uh, you know, support the show. Share it with a friend or send me an email at streetforce1 at gmail.com or smartbrownvoices at gmail.com if you want to be on the show. Peace out. Thanks for listening to Smart Brown Voices with your host, Mr. Mike Street. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends and colleagues. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts and make sure to follow us on social media. This has been a Mr. Mike Street production. Join us next time for another edition of Smart Brown Voices and be inspired.